Coming up at 849 <laughs> on this uh, Tuesday morning. I was just talking about this a few minutes ago. I want to go back to this. Uh, we were talking about the just the awful heat and just the really, you know, the tough conditions of the West Coast of the United States. And that's because of this heat dome, big upper level ridge that's centered over the Western United States. Just off screen here, and I'm about to show you this, is a hurricane in the Eastern Pacific that is part of this overall weather pattern as well. So the tropics have heated up. We talked about going back about a week ago, uh, August, we had no named storms in the Atlantic Hurricane Basin, which is the first time that happened since the late 90s. Of course, that's heated up since then. We've had a couple storms in the Atlantic that are not doing anything as far as land impacts. One way out in the eastern Atlantic, the d name storm, and then it's a tropical storm, Earl. That's going to stay in the Atlantic. Hurricane K is going to continue to strengthen, uh, but because of that upper level ridge, it, it you know these storms this time of year try to kind of ride up into the Baja California area and then provide some rains to the kind of the monsoon rains to the western United States. But here's what's going to happen with Hurricane K, at least the way it looks right now as it strengthens that upper level ridge it's going to kind of block it from getting up in uh, that area and kind of keep it over the uh, eastern pacific at least the way it looks right now which is unfortunate because of course they need the rain in the western united states back here closer to home uh we've still got those pop-up isolated downpour chances later this afternoon uh, mostly far eastern and southeastern Oklahoma. Those are the favorite areas. Of course, yesterday we had one or two that snuck their way into the Tulsa metro. It's not out of the question that could happen again today. Don't cancel your outdoor plans, but just know that it is a possibility, a slight possibility. Highs this afternoon, back in the upper 80s and low 90s, and that'll be actually the way for the next two or three days, to be completely honest. Here's a look at our highs for today, and actually I'm just going to run you through the rest of the week here on Future View. Pop-up shower and storms to the south and east, highs upper 80s to low 90s. Tomorrow, Lows in the 60s and a few afternoon clouds. Highs upper 80s, low 90s. Thursday, here we go again. Lows in the 60s, northeasterly breeze. Highs in the upper 80s, low 90s. Sound familiar? Yeah, we're just kind of stuck on repeat this week, but it's not a terrible spot for us to be stuck in. Given how hot it is out to the west, could be a lot worse. We're a couple degrees above normal, but once again, for this time of year, we certainly have been hotter. As we head into Friday, uh, once again, a comfortable morning. Highs pushing the low 90s just off the map by Friday afternoon to our north and west as a cold front approaching. It looks like from sometime Saturday night or even into Sunday morning is when that next cold front comes pushing in. And it is a strong enough front, at least the way it looks right now, that it should provide us a decent cool down for the second half of the weekend. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a lot of moisture to work with. So at the moment, it doesn't appear to bring us good rain chances, which is not great because we do need more rain around here. But through the rest of the week, and just kind of holding in, in neutral here, comfortable mornings, a little bit toasty in the afternoons, but certainly doable for uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Saturday, still keeping that kind of on the toasty side of things. And then right now, it looks like Saturday night or Sunday morning, that cold front pushes through. And it does make an impact to our morning lows and our afternoon highs with the cool down, it looks like, for the end of the weekend and early next week.